Welcome back to Innovators. Viative is a leading provider of immersive learning solutions, mainly using virtual reality to help bring lessons to life for a large number of school children around the world. Now, recently, the company has partnered with Lenovo to bring the technology to its computers. And with me to explain a little bit more about that partnership is Dave Dolan. Uh, he is the chief product officer at Viative Labs uh, to explain more about that. So, Dave, welcome. Great to see you. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Yes, um, so let's start with just lay the groundwork. What does V8 do? And then let's talk about how you will expand with this partnership. Okay, I'll start a little bit about the VR, okay? As we know, the VR is a very engaging device. It can take us to different places and allow us for different experiences. And that's nice, but when you're talking about education, you know, that just isn't enough, right? Because we know that with the, the VR, it allows for self-paced, self-directed learning opportunities for students. And they're in a distraction-free and judgment-free environment. And this allows for complete focus on, on what they're doing, free of distractors. So that's a, a very good way to, to promote a deeper level of learning and to attend to higher order thinking skills. And this is a ripe situation for learning to happen. So it's at that moment that we really need to supply them with complex abstract concepts and have them experience those things. And that's when the magic happens. So it really, the VR really is a must have for schools and not just a, a nice to have. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing when I was reading about your company and you just said it as well, some people, and I would include myself in this for the most part, are mm -hmm. experiential learners. Exactly. We kind of have to live it to really understand and comprehend what it is. And VR allows that where a book would not. Exactly. It, it allows you to, to get inside of something. You know, I, you know even if you take the, the human eye, for example, you know, you can get inside the eye and see how everything's moving, right? And that allows for a different way to connect with that idea, right? And that's how, that's how you can really get to understand about sight for example. So the partnership with Lenovo, so how does that work? Walk me through the process. Okay, well, right now, because of COVID-19, schools and students don't have VR devices at home. Now, we had done a project with UNICEF to bring immersive experiences to students with PCs. Now, right now, we're converting our library of content to WebXR, which allows students to learn at home without a VR. But again, having that experience or having that available isn't quite enough. So part of the Vita solution is that involves data and analytics. And that allows a teacher to stay connected with the student, even when they're remote, right? So Lenovo saw the value in having students learn with the VR, but also in having students um, have these accessible to them, even when they're at home and having those immersive experiences there. And so the learning should never stop, and even in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And VR, it seems like so far, it's kind of new in education. It seems like it's yeah. really just being used at wealthy schools or kind of experimental at this point. But do you see that changing? Oh, uh, see, I, I don't see it the same way, you know. Okay. And, you know, it definitely isn't just for the wealthy. Because we, we've seen a huge uptick in traditionally less affluent countries, such as Vietnam, Mexico, Nigeria, India, you know, we're, we're priced to be accessible to all. So some places like India, um, you know, they, they see this as an opportunity to jump ahead in a way, because maybe they weren't able to afford smart boards and smart classrooms and, you know, or they can't get physical labs because it's just too, too cost prohibitive. But now they see a chance that with the VR, they can, they can get ahead of that curve, right? So our mandate from the beginning was really to be accessible to all, uh, you know, localized in the late native language, and then available both online and offline. Because, you know, we, we can't always be um, fully dependent on the internet connectivity. You know, I mean, right now we are, you know, and this is where we are at this moment. But... Um, it's necessary because everybody's remote, but you know, you have to be ready for both cases. Has it been around education enough, VR, to get any kind of data on it? Like how does it improve the learning experience? Does it make a material difference? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
you know, two years ago, three years ago, I would have said, you know, we, we just don't know. But today, the prevailing research is both positive and encouraging. You know, you have the University of Maryland showing an 8% rise in, in recall accuracy when studying in the VR. You know, universities in China have done quite a bit of research. They've done research on language learning and find a two or two and a half time increase in the ability to learn using the VR. And remarkably, about 10 times increase in confidence, you know, when they're studying a language. The University of Barcelona has done a, a, a found a, a correlation between embodying an intelligent person, you know, like um, Einstein, and seeing improvements in cognition. Right? So, and finally, there's a, there's a psychologist uh, at Stanford um, who has posited that becoming indistractable is the most important skill for the 21st century. Yeah. And so, you know, there's so much noise out there with phones and so on, but the VR really addresses this well. And I'm wondering too about kids who have ADHD and, and things like that, like VR may especially be catered to them, may allow them to focus a little better. Exactly. There was, um, there was a study by Rizzo and, you know, there's eight, there's eight factors with ADHD and VR can attend to two of them, but V to VR attends to six of, of the eight, you know, when, when you remove extract, because you, you need the students to feel a sense of, of uh, controlling their own learning, right? And that's part of, you know, being with, with ADHD is that, you know, if I can get the distractors away, I can control that. I can, I can, I can pace myself. That it does. It goes a long way towards alleviating, alleviating that. Now, are there some subjects that lend themselves better to virtual learning than others? Absolutely. You know, I think those subjects that are conceptually hard to visualize. You know, maths and sciences. You know, if you're doing Pascal's law or quadrilaterals or um, photosynthesis, you, you can get right inside and, and understand that better. But also anything that has a safety element to it, you know, a, a lab that might explode in the school or medical training or vocational training. And then something like language learning, that you need an instructor. You, you just can't learn to speak on your own. You can, you can study vocabulary and, and listening skills, but to speak, you need either a language partner or you need an instructor. But with the VR, we have voice recognition so that somebody can study on their own and really get confidence and, and, and learn to vocalize. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about the safety issue. That's an excellent point. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you don't know yeah, why. Well, well, exactly. I mean, you're, you, can, you can kill a virtual patient a couple of times before you get it right, you know? True. So, um, okay. It's so not too bad. How does the rollout with Lenovo work? Like what's the timetable and what's the whole process of that? Well, the process, it, it really was that we were gonna come out with them for the, the, their new class, the VR classroom two, you know, but again, with the schools being closed, we needed to find a better way to serve, you know, a more immediate need. And for that, you know, we'll be, we'll be traveling with, with Lenovo with their PCs and starting out with the WebXR in that way. And then um, students will be able to interact with the content on their PCs. And then when they do get back into schools, you know, nothing is wasted. You, you get straight into the VR and any scores that you've had with the PCs will, will translate into a teacher's dashboard either from the VR or from the PC. So it's an innovative approach that we're collaborating with, with uh, Lenovo on. But this is also a, a global partnership. So we're coming out with this in India, in Canada, in the U.S., and possibly Japan. And, you know, I mean, expect to see us in quite a few other regions very, very soon. And you are offering some of the modules online for free. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so if you go to covid.vative.com, you'll find some, some free resources up there and using the, the WebXR. And so... There's no application that you need. There's nothing you need to sign up for. We just, we want to make something that's available to, to anybody to use right away. Okay, because a lot of the, the staff at, at Vative are teachers or ex-teachers. We just felt we wanted to have something out there for everybody. And we just simply wanted to help.
Mm -hmm. Well, I think it sounds very exciting. I love education. I love innovation in education. And I think this sounds like a really great thing to pursue. So best of luck to you. And hopefully these kids get back to school soon. We can start to implement. Well, we're, we're all hoping. Yeah. I mean, we're all struggling where we are. So, you know, stay safe and stay healthy. You okay. too. Thank you so okay. much. Dave Dolan, a chief product officer at Vative. And great to have you with us. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.